Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Court of the Digester. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, etc. Right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> here. There's an article in the Telegraph. Uh, there's an article in the Telegraph, which is... <clears throat> <clears throat> which essentially should be enough to bury this transition nonsense. I don't think it will be because of the zealotry of individuals that believe this is necessary, the zealotry of individuals that believe it's okay. Over the last few days, I've watched with horror, abject horror, after Rishi Sunak's um, speech, okay? The number of, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, the chap that cleans the floor or the woman that, you know, gets rid of the waste. I'm talking about... Senior figures in the NHS, senior figures in the NHS, who are so blatantly ideologically captured by gender identity ideology that they are unable to do their job. That's my assessment. Now, I'm nobody, but I would have thought that the organisations that do assess these things, such as the... Oh, I forgot what they're called. <laughs> what the, off Med. No, oh, not Off Med. Who are they? <laughs> the CDC, the US American offer, oh, God's sake, Barry. I'm going to have to switch this off and start again. No, don't bother. Right, whoever, the General Medical Council. See, I get there in the end. It's age. Don't, you know, sitting there being young and smug. It's age. It'll happen to you too. All right? General Medical Council, right? And I'm literally, all I could do on the day that this was going on was just repost every time one of these deluded tossers said something. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another, and they just kept coming out of the woodwork. And they were consultants and anaesthetists and psychologists. These were people high up in the NHS. Right, if I, if I was the, you know, off med, that's what I'm gonna call it from now on, you know, off, well, off med, <laughs> right? If I was the, the powers that be, every one of them needs investigating. Every single one needs investigating and every single one needs removing from their position where they're with patients. And said to somebody said to me, because I had a pop at this activist anaesthetist. Oh, that's hard. Try that. I'm the very model of an activist anaesthetist. <laughs> Try it. It's hard, right? This activist anaesthetist. I really like saying activist anaesthetist. <laughs> Such a twerk, Right. Some, somebody somebody messaged me saying, ooh, a bit vicious, because I was having a go, right? You gay conversion therapy supporting twat. That kind of thing that I put, you know, because I want them angry, all right? Uh, and uh, vicious, I thought, vicious? What do you mean vicious? I wonder how many young women he's anaesthetised so, so, we, so we could remove their breasts. Do you think he's done any? Do you think it's possible that he has? Maybe he hasn't. I'm not saying he has. I'm saying, do you think it's possible that he has? Sitting there smugly, talking about trans whites and human whites? At the same time, you know, giving the old gas and air to the girls having their tits lopped off. Trent, he's done any? One will do it. One will do it. First, they do no harm, you medical scandal bastards. First, they do no harm. But yet, all I'm seeing is harm. And the article in the Telegraph tells you exactly the kind of harm that we're seeing. It looks to me to be a quite a well-controlled and a well-carried-out trial. Dr. M and the likes of... Um, Fond of Beatles, etc., who have a far greater understanding than this academic, this non academic nitwit does, of these kind of things, I'm sure will gift us with more information about the nature, standards, and therefore e efficacy of the study that is quoted. But it makes no difference to me now. It makes that, you know, it, you don't have to go, I need you to prove it's a fire when you can see the smoke. You just have to go, is it? Is it possibly a fire? And then you get up closer and you can see the smoke and the fire and people still go in, yeah, but you'll have to prove it's a fire. It might look like a fire. It's actually a fire. So it makes no difference to me. Okay, the point of my curiosity was peaked. I've been and looked and I now know what's going on. I don't need much else to convince me of a few simple, straightforward things. And the first thing that I would say is that within the next 10 to 15 years, we need to eradicate, deal with and put to bed the false idea of gender dysphoria. That's what we need to do. We need to understand it's a symptom of other things which we have seen happen because we've got people who are telling us detransitions are saying that it didn't go away. It was temporarily allayed. It didn't go away and then it came back with a vengeance after I'd done hormones, breast replacement, you know, 
pork tube production, you know, or having Wookiee old walloped between your thighs. That's what it is. It's simply a symptom of some other great big things that it shouldn't have, shouldn't have had a diagnosis in the first place. You know, I'm unhappy with my body, says the, says the individual. Right, okay. What do you want to do about it? Well, I'd like to change it. Sorry, can't do that. It's too dangerous. Too dangerous. Yes, but I'm in distress. Okay, we'll help you with that. But you're not changing your body. People say to me, I understand that you're standing up for young children, particularly gay ones who are being brutalised at the hands of this new gay conversion therapy. But surely, Barry, you would agree that adults should be able to do whatever they want. Anybody who spends significant time with me will tell you that I'm very much about that, about the fact that we, you know, get out of our lives. We don't need you, mummy and daddy. But I'll tell you that. That is not the point, okay? Do I think, yes, I do, but no. This says an awful lot about us as a society, and we know that one of the first tenets of medicine is firstly, do no harm. And it doesn't take Superman to realise that from the second, the second, a child is introduced to the idea of gender identity, the conversion therapy begins and the lie begins. And until the day they die, possibly with dementia, screaming because they, <coughs> screaming because they can't understand what they've done to their own body because it doesn't stay, it's not real. Screaming because they don't understand what they've done to their own body. That that's the bookends, folks. Right, you get it? So you've got Diane Aaron Shaft. I think Clive's doing some stuff on Diane Aaron Shaft. Diane Aaron Shaft, who's an absolute fruit loop, right, who's at the base of some of this, talking about two-year-olds tugging their clothes and making them, therefore, saying they don't like their gender identity. That's the dangerous stuff there. And on the other end, you've got reality, as in dementia, Alzheimer's, kicking them in the teeth every single day when they wake up and find out they're not whole anymore or they've mutilated their body. Now, is it me or is that the two bookends we need as a society? The insanity of the idea of the trans child, the danger of puberty blockers, the danger that the second that child is taught about this gender identity crap as anything other but a cult. The day we isolate it, we make it a cult. It is a cult, right? The danger there, right to the end there, to the death, the last day of waking up with no memory of the fact that you've damaged your body as if you will relive that horror every day. It all ends. And the Telegraph article has done nothing but strengthen my resolve. No puberty blockers, no cross-sex hormones, no cosmetic surgeries. We as a society say we do not practice barbaric cult flesh sacrificing. We don't do it on the altar of a spirit, the gendered soul. We don't need any more studies. We don't need any more information. It is, a, it is a national disgrace that we have taken part in this. And we as a society, firstly, do no harm. Do not allow people to harm themselves to this extent. We do not allow our systems and procedures to, to support that. We do not allow our NHS system, funded by the public, to create people who will be in need of public support financially and medically until the day they drop. We do not do that. Based on a soul, a gendered soul slipped into a flesh sack. We don't do it. Okay? I think we've got enough for Sunak to say it's done. We're banning it, full stop, right across the board. And you ban anybody that provides it in Britain. Anybody, right? Anybody. Just, it's got to stop. We're hurting too many people, not least of all gay children. I could be wrong about this. I'm not mind. I could be wrong about this, but <clears throat> I've done my own work. Looks to me like a massive medical scandal. Wake up and smell the coffee. It stops. And yet we've got NHS staff saying, we shall continue to do this. Da, 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 da. Will you? You won't, mate, because we're going to fire you. Because I think what we we'll need to do now is we need to, we need to really start banging the NHS on the head and banging the government on the head and saying, we as a citizenry, we as the people, we the people, right, are telling you the following that where we identify these individuals who are captured by gender identity ideology and refuse to bow to the will of the people, we will keep going and we will come after them until one by one they are removed from the NHS from whence they will never be able to practice again. Never be able to practice again. That's what we do. 
The time for nicey nicey is over. These people have revealed themselves to be what they are. We should treat them accordingly. Gender identity, transition, trans within 15 years should be a distant memory and nothing like it must ever, ever exist again. That's how we ended. That's exactly what they did with eugenics. I'll see you later.